In this video, we're taking a look at BlackBerry. Now, of course, I have reviewed BlackBerry here on the channel before, but I wanted to come back and visit the stock again and really do another deep dive and analysis around the actual stock because here's the thing, a lot of things have changed over the last few months and especially the last few weeks, Wall Street bets and the subreddits have climbed into the stock and of course there's been a lot of price activity because of it. Now, before we jump in and have a look at the actual financials, have a look at the data, I do need to provide some disclosure here. I actually do own some BlackBerry shares. Now I've owned those BlackBerry shares pretty much from the end of last year. I've got some very specific reasons which I'll talk about later in this video. But with that said, I wanted to actually just go into the financials, go into the company and see what's happening, what's different, what's new, and help you guys make sense whether this is a good time for you to jump on board and actually take a play in the BlackBerry stock. So let's jump in and let's have a look what's going on. Before we jump into this video, I just want to ask you a really big favor. I need you to click on that like button and turn it blue because it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So if you can go ahead and click on the like button now. So before we go into the financials and the charts and all of that good stuff, I just wanted to remind everybody about where BlackBerry really started. And I think it's really interesting as part of this analysis to really understand what is going on with BlackBerry. So this handset that you're looking at in front of here is probably the handset that most of you know BlackBerry for. This is, this is the product that really made BlackBerry what the company is today. And BlackBerry was very well known for this, what was in the day a very smart device. Um, and of course you had those BlackBerry services which was one fee and enabled you to browse the web and get email. It was just a fantastic service and way ahead of its time at that specific time. And of course they took away a lot of market share from Nokia at the time. And Nokia and BlackBerry really were the two big competing um, phone providers and especially in terms of smartphones. Then we come forward to today and this is their latest handset. Now staying true to their roots, they've stuck with a traditional hard keyboard rather than a software keyboard and this is where they're really trying to differentiate themselves. But there's something really, really interesting going on with BlackBerry. In fact, if you come over to BlackBerry's product page on the homepage, in fact, if you go straight to the homepage, you cannot find anything on the homepage about BlackBerry actually providing mobile phones. In fact, everything on here is about security, it's about software, it's about uh, all these different elements that actually have nothing to do with smartphones. And then if you come down to their products and you have a look, you can see they've got AI projects, they've got stuff for the automotive industry, um, they've got uh, transportation assets for tracking. I mean, they've got all sorts of just incredibly uh, varied software. And then buried right down here at the bottom in the consumer products, they've got two consumer products, which is the smartphones and the antivirus. And if you click on the smartphones, this is the only time buried deep within their site that you'll actually start to find some of the BlackBerry phones. And that's pretty interesting because we all remember BlackBerry for this. And the reason BlackBerry is in the news is pretty much because of this. But if you have a look at their website and you go over what's going on here, you'll soon figure out that BlackBerry is a very diversified company today. In fact, a very, very different company from what we've come to know. And so with that said, I think it's interesting to keep that in mind. And as I said, I do have a speculative play out on the stock at the moment. I've had it since the end of last year and I'll talk a little bit in more detail about that later on but I think the key thing to note is that BlackBerry just isn't what it used to be it's a completely different company so let's jump in and let's have a look at the chart so obviously looking at the chart here we can see that uh, BlackBerry's had a little bit of a rough run over the last while I mean they've they've had you know their, their share price in 2018 just really go all the way down and then recently here it's really started to peak up again. And so if we come across and we have a look at the financials, there's a couple of interesting things to have a look at. The first thing is of course that the share price right now is almost half of what it was 10 years ago. So definitely there's been a lot of value loss for investors. Look at the market cap, they have a 6.2 billion market cap with 2.5 billion in net equity, which very surprisingly gives them a 40 percent equity. So all those years of taking profit on those BlackBerry phones, a really good decade towards the end of the 90s and early 2000s. Um, you've got to say that they've obviously put a lot of that money aside. And if you look at this negative profit margin here, the fact that they have no PE ratio at the moment, pretty much tells the story of how BlackBerry's had to really use the equity 
um, to, to pretty much keep themselves going and diversify their business. And this is a big part of why I wanted to show you guys that at the beginning of this video, because BlackBerry today is a very different business from the way we know it, and that's because they were forced to diversify. Now, coming down and having looked at their free cash flows, we can see they've got 37 million in free cash flow, which really is very, very small if you compare this to their equity. But we have to keep in mind that these guys obviously are investing a lot of their money and they're not taking profit at the moment, which is a big issue. Then we come down and we have a look at the year on years, and this is where the picture really starts to become very clear. We can see that the number of shares have been going up a little bit each year so you know there has been a little bit of share dilution however have a look at this assets are pretty much sideways in the last three years and if we take a look at liabilities pretty much the same picture so it's almost as if they're just managing to stay afloat using that equity trying to get to the next thing that's going to take them back to the blackberry of old the the early success that they had in the 2000s and then if we come down and we have a look at equity we can see equity pretty much the same picture sideways over a three year period. And uh, of course, the only place where we start to, to see really something that's changed, I mean, you look at the revenue, revenue has gone from 932 million to 861 million. And of course, this is in the trading 12 months, they actually did have a pretty good year the year before at 1 billion. The problem is, when you start breaking down that total revenue, you'll see that they actually have negative net income from continued operations, which means that they're actually not making money from primary products and service. In addition to which, uh, if you have a look at operating income, these numbers are all negative as well. And they've been negative for the last three years. And that tells me that BlackBerry is putting everything they have left, every little bit of gas left in the tank is being put towards trying to get them back to profit, back to that company that we all knew and that we all loved. Now coming down and having a look at the free cash flows, this is probably the only positive area. Operating cash flow and free cash flow seen a little bit of an improvement here, but in all fairness guys, this is a management move. This is not because they're making money. This is purely because the balance sheet has been moved around a little bit, income statements have been moved around a bit, and this is really uh, a case of just managing money a little better than they have over here. And uh, for me, the personal situation that I see here developing is that fundamentally, when we go through my checklist, I think BlackBerry is going to fail terribly in terms of the fundamentals. But we have to take into consideration the big play here. BlackBerry is really working hard to diversify and get themselves to that next stage. And because the stock is so cheap right now, that is, and it, and it certainly was a lot cheaper when I bought in at the end of last year, uh, I felt that it's a good speculation because they are obviously making a lot of investments into key areas and I do think that BlackBerry is going to manage to pull it off and of course just like Nokia I do believe this is an iconic brand that is going to be around in the future in one shape form or another I don't know what that shape is going to be but I do believe they're going to be around now if we go down to the fundamental checklist, like I said, they're gonna fail pretty terribly. The share price is more than halved, so we have to mark them down. The P ratio is definitely not between one and 25, and they do not have any profit margin, so to speak of. They do, however, have strong equity. That's the one thing they've got going for them at the moment. And of course, no dividend costs, so they get a check mark there. Pretty much everything else, they're failing flat out. Number of shares have been going up. That means shares are being diluted. Total revenue has not been going up. Uh, the gross profit has not been going up. If we have a look at operating income, that's also down. Net income from continued operations is down. Operating cash flow is down. And free cash flow growth has not consistently been heading in the right direction for the last three years. That being said, there is a little bit of hope on the horizon. The, the chatter and the banter on the airwaves is that BlackBerry is nearing the end of a lot of R&D in a lot of different projects and that there is profit coming very soon. Now that being said, on the verdicts, this is where I score them. Pretty much on the fundamentals, only 16% positive, 83% negative. And uh, if we have a look at the industry analysts, they've got them pegged about 12 bucks at the end of the next 12 months, which is more or less where the stock is right now. Uh, if you look at return on equity and you look at the return on asset, return on capital, all of these in the, in the red respectively, negative 31, negative two, negative four. And then of course, the other big thing we need to talk about is that net income to continued operations. And we can see here, 
looking at this, it's negative 61%. That means they're absolutely not making money from primary products or service. So I personally don't think the price is actually gonna move much. I think the price is probably gonna go up a little bit because of Wall Street bets. I think there's gonna be a lot of sentiment in the price. The price is gonna move, but not because of fundamentals. It's going to move because of sentiment. And so I think reasonably when people tire of the stock, it's gonna come back to 11 bucks. It's probably gonna hover, hover around there for a while. And so I think based on that, uh, if you're currently holding BlackBerry, you should probably continue to hold just the same way I am. However, if you are looking to buy into BlackBerry right now, I don't think it's the best time to buy. I think there's gonna be a lot of hype in the market because of Wall Street bets. And for that reason, I have a strong sell out on BlackBerry at the moment. That being said, in total contradiction to what I'm saying here, I'm gonna to continue to hold my BlackBerry shares because it is a speculative play for me. It's a play I started taking towards the end of the next uh, end of last year. It's 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 a share I've committed to owning for the next five years because I do believe there are bigger things on the horizon, and I do believe that they're investing that equity very very wisely. So for those reasons, I'm going to continue to hold. But if you are looking to buy in right now, right here today, I'd probably say it's not the best choice. However, if you currently already hold shares, I would say continue to hold and uh, just make sure you do it with two things in mind. First of all, know that you're gonna to have to hold for the long term. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, uh, of course, know that this is a speculation play and that you could potentially lose some money. So with that said, I hope this video has helped you. I hope that it's given you some guidance as to what you should potentially do, be doing with BlackBerry. And uh, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. If you agree or disagree with me, that's okay. We have a vigorous community here. The Money Tribe on our channel is always debating topics, especially in the comment section. So don't be shy, introduce yourself, get involved in the conversation. And of course, if you have not already subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. And then a last request, guys, please click on the like button. It helps us get these videos out. It helps us rank them on YouTube. And it is a simple way to show your token of appreciation to us for creating this content. And we really, really would appreciate it. Before you go, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel and join the Global Money Tribe. And because I know you need a little bit of extra motivation every month, I'm gonna be giving away a signed copy of my book, The Money Secret, as well as some really cool channel merch. So if that's not a big enough motivation to subscribe, Come and subscribe for the content because every single day we're adding absolutely great content teaching you to invest, save and manage your money situation.